CIT 225 Network Security and Penetration Testing Chapter Number 3 Scanning Tools It's an academic course so make sure whatever you're learning in the course is used for the academic purposes only we are not responsible for your actions anything outside this classroom since the course is a little bit uh, of the nature where you'll be learning about a little bit about hacking and the tools so we won't be teaching you how to hack but we'll teach you how to protect yourself from these kind of things now scanning plays an important role whenever you are trying to protect your own network against any kind of external threats external threats could be anyone who's trying to find some information about you or your organization okay so this tool this chapter is talking about all the tools which are quite famous but not limited to these tools which are mentioned in this uh, chapter objectives are comprehend the functioning of scanners trace the development of scanners identify various type of scanning and identify different scanners now you must know all those things because if you are aware only then you can protect yourself in most of the organizations these days we have intrusion detection systems installed appliances which automatically detect if someone is trying to scan your network for any vulnerabilities the main purpose of these scanners is first of all to find the targets the second thing is to launch the uh, to launch an attack against those targets and of course it's very easy to do if you are within an organization so you must know that what tools are used and how to protect yourself uh, some tools are available for free some were free but now they are paid so you won't be able to use them but uh, for trial purposes maybe it would search for 30 computers or 60 nodes or something like that it won't go beyond that now scanners find and fix vulnerabilities in remote machines on a network not always they identify that these are the weaknesses of your system you'll have to find the cure for that so if there are any ports which are open on a computer which are vulnerable you can identify it yourself you'll identify it only if you are capable of it second thing is if you are doing it for penetration testing only software tools that examine and reports about vulnerabilities on local and remote hosts so these tools are used to scan your entire network you can target a specific computer you can target uh, a specific server in your data center which is quite vulnerable and then you'll find a cure for it the hackers usually use these kind of tools on the internet as well there are ways through which you can find the IP ranges of the websites and countries so you'll have an idea that from this IP range to this IP range belongs to this country there are websites for that we'll cover it in the student labs now port scanner examines and reports the condition open or closed of a port and applications listening to that port so there are 65,535 ports on your computer as I told you earlier okay now there are different functions of those ports some ports are always open for example port 80 and port 443 for communications so if you find port 80 or 443 usually it means that it's a web server you can further get the details of the operating system through scanning the ports there are ways we use nmap for that and there are certain flags on it that we use in order to identify further nmap would show you that which ports are open or listening and which ports are closed and what are the services running on those ports now evolution of scanners scanners first appeared even before the ARPANET to monitor the connections between mainframes and dump terminals they wanted to know if those machines are up or not the internet was launched in 1970 the early unix like language had no security at all legitimate network users would connect to a remote unix servers by having their modem dial to specific telephone numbers led to the invention of the new tool the war dialer 
So I remember a long time ago in 1998 and 1999 in the university when the internet uh, uh, started like it was there in the student labs and uh, the emails were on Unix. So we were drafting the emails on a command prompt. It was very difficult to edit them. You'll have to go all the way back and then backspace, delete the uh, text that you want to remove and then modify and then you were using only keyboard in order to send and receive and check emails, etc. That's it. So there was no graphical user interface of the emails and stuff. Now, war dialer script that tells the modem to dial a range of phone numbers defined by the user and then identify those numbers that connect to the remote computers to form an automated scanner. It was form of the same scanner that we use these days in order to scan the ports. In the early 1980s, the majority of the servers ran on Unix platforms. That's why it's been very successful. It developed over the passage of time. Even the Linux operating systems are based on it. System administrators create shell scripts that led them to check the security weakness of their networks to avoid hacking activities. As the internet increased in availability and popularity, more computers and networks became connected. Today, scanners are available for several popular platforms. Now, there are different kinds of scanners. Not all scanners provide you the best results. So you'll have to check that which scanners you need to use for official purposes. If you are a penetration tester, which tools are required? For example, there is a IP scanner tool, Angry IP, and there are lots of other tools available. They'll give you the IP range or the computers which are up or which are working. They have a software uh, with, the, uh, with the help of which you can even scan the ports but I have tested it, they does not exactly tell you that how many ports are open on a computer, unless and until if you are using Nmap or any other specialized tool for that. Now, you can use Nmap on, in a Windows environment or you can use it on Kali Linux. Now, of course, in a network environment where you have all Windows PCs, you must be uh, least concerned about how Kali Linux would be operating in your organization. But being a penetration tester, you must have it installed somewhere in order to check your own network. You never know if a person is there and he is using his mobile phone or a laptop to scan the network. That gives you an insight that what's running in your network, how many computers, which ports are open, which ports are blocked and if those computers have any external access to them. It means that if anyone can access them from outside the network. So, you'll have to control that using your own firewall. How scanners work? Scanners automate the process of examining network weakness. Scanners are not heuristic functions connected to target host, examines the target host for services running on it, examines each service for any known vulnerability. So, you can see that it can connect to target hosts, it can examine the target host for services and it can even check the known vulnerabilities. So, if it is compromised, the user can, ac can get access to the services running on it, they can remotely suspend the services, they can shut down the services, they can restart the services they can add their services, they can even copy the data using those ports which are open to your computer and they can paste the stuff on your computer. Now, how do they do it? By finding any known vulnerabilities. Just like you remember ransomware, it was Microsoft MS uh, um, 17 underscore 010 vulnerability which was a shared vulnerability of SMB. It was exploited for the hackers. It was very easy to find that specific port, get access to that machine, and then once you are in, they can do anything from the command prompt. They can send files, they can copy files, they can run services, they can suspend services, they can restart services. So literally, the computers were 100% in their possession. So, the way to protect yourself against any kind of known vulnerabilities is 
to make sure that your systems are patched. Patched means that you must have all your operating systems up to date running the latest operating system and you must have all latest updates installed on those computers. Now those known vulnerabilities are found on the internet. There is a CVC database of it on the internet for the known vulnerabilities. You can find it from there or you can make sure that your operating systems are updated. Now how do you make sure that your operating system is always updated? You cannot force the employees to install the updates on daily basis. There are cumulative updates, there are security updates, there are uh, critical updates which are always released by Microsoft. At home, it's your own responsibility to make sure that you are updating and you are installing the latest updates. But in a network environment, we have servers like SCCM and WSUS. SCCM is a Windows Server and old name was a WSUS, Windows Service, uh, Server Update Services and SACM is applying the patches on the computers in a network environment. We need these two servers installed in our environment because the functionality of this server would be to download all the latest updates from Microsoft website, keep it on it and keep it pushing on the servers on the network now what would happen is if you have 300 computers or 500 computers if all of them would start downloading windows updates all together it would choke the bandwidth right because each download is the major updates are 4 to 5 gb if all of those computers would start downloading the updates it would take a lot of bandwidth on your network. So what we do is that we have a server which we call WSUS or SCCM. It would download all the updates on it and whenever the computer is available online, it would push the updates to those computers. Now, since it's pushing the updates, this server must be powerful enough how you have configured it that it would download the updates and keep it with it or it would download only when required from Microsoft website. But its main function would be to make sure that all computers are patched all the time. Now since it's downloading the updates, there would be timings for it that it would download the updates for example after 2 a.m. in night. And it would keep them ready as soon as the person comes in the organization, he connects his computer, the updates would be pushed to those computers. But on your Active Directory, you'll have to set up a policy that your clients must not get updates from Microsoft directly. They must report to this server for any updates, but they cannot go to the website directly in order to download the updates. Because if you will not do that, maybe there would be guys who would be downloading the updates and still consuming the bandwidth. The second way to control that is you have different subnets in your network. For example, for student labs, for faculty PCs, staff PCs, and so on. So what you can do is that you can define that only your servers are allowed to get the latest updates from Microsoft. Rest of the computers are not allowed to get the updates. And how, how you would do that? On your firewall. You'll define a rule that a set of servers in your data center are allowed to download the updates, but the rest of the computers will have to report to the SCCM or WSUS server. <coughs> now, there are different types of scannings. TCP connect scannings attempts to make a TCP connection with all of the ports on a remote computer. Target host transmits the connection succeed and that the message for the active ports. User does not need to the read, uh, root privileges to perform the TCP connection scanning. Almost all intrusion detection systems recognize the scanning. How can you protect yourself from being detected by IDS? 
We will cover it in a minute. Half open scanning, the TCP connection scanning that does not complete the connection. Now, in order to understand that, you must have three things in your mind. There is a sin, then you have a sin act. Okay? And the third thing is what? Act. These are the three modes on which it would work or it would try to understand. Now you have three computers, you have two computers which are trying to communicate with each other. There is a computer number one and there is a computer number two. So the first communication between the computer if you are sending a pin command in order to communicate between each other would be SYN, synchronization, it would send a message that hello I'm trying to some send some packets to you are you there the second computer would reply with a message with a sin act we call it number two that say yes I'm awake let's establish a connection so then it would send a command to that one we call it act so whenever you are talking about communication between the two computers it's a three-way handshake in order to communicate. Now, everything is fine over here except this ACK, which is the third communication medium in between. This identifies that now the connection is established in between the two computers. In order to keep it secret, we go in a silent mode or in a stealth mode. It's called, we use a flag when we'll scan the NMAP tool, we'll write it minus SS in order to be in a stealth mode. So the intrusion detection system will be able to see SYN and SYNAC, but it won't be able to see ACK. It means that it won't be able to see that there is a connection in between both parties. That's how they hide their identity when they are scanning anything on the network. The main idea of these hackers are to be in a stealth mode so that they are not detected by intrusion detection systems. If they are detected over there, they'll put them in quarantine or it would highlight it so that the network administrators are aware of it and they'll take appropriate actions. Now type of scannings as they are saying, half scanning continues only sin and then message is sent from the scanner, reply signal may be SYNAC, indicating the port is open and attacker reply with a reset flag to avoid detection. What would happen after this thing is that instead of hiding this thing, it would just send a reset command. That the connection has been reset, I'm not able to communicate further, so it would detect that there is no uh, communication between them. Root or system administrator privileges are required to perform half open scanning. So you must be an administrator. The problem with uh, the mobile phones these days and bring your own devices concept is that you can even install Kali Linux on mobile phones and it works perfectly fine through that as well. So if you are even connected to a Wi-Fi network, you will be able to scan whatever you want to do. Further, if you want to install Kali Linux, you can install it from their website. They have a VMware images or VirtualBox images pre-built available on their website. You don't need to install it, just download it and execute it. We covered how to use VirtualBox uh, on our computers in last semester. It would be the same thing. Now UDP scanning examines the status of the UDP ports on a target computer. Scanner send a zero byte UDP packet to all ports on a target host to know which ports are open and through which ports you can communicate. Most operating systems generate UDP messages very slow makes UDP scanning impractical. Now in most of the cases if your IDS are working or your firewall is active you'll get the scanning results a bit slow 
on nmap or zenmap whatever you are using because it takes some time in order to gather the information on the network now ip port scanning examines a target host for supported ip protocol scanner transmit ip packets to each protocol and the target host re replies with icmp unreachable message to the scanner then the target host does not use that protocol now the question arises that what's the difference between a ping scanning and a port scanning a ping scanning demonstrates whether a remote host is active by sending icmp echo request packets to that host only that's it you'll send a request you'll send, you'll receive a reply that okay the pc is up and it's responding but if you want to know the vulnerabilities of the system and the ports which are open you'll have to use deep scanning for that stealth scanning lets you examine the host behind the firewalls and packet filtering most stealth scanners do not allow target host to log the scanning activities you can use these flags up here as you can see that they are writing or they are using the tags in here and they are scanning the network now with these kind of scanners like zenmap or nmap on a windows we call it nmap it's not necessary that you'll scan a single ip address you can scan the entire subnet by just writing slash 20 or 24 or slash 16 after an ip address and it would scan the entire lot of computers and would tell you exactly how many computers have which ports open so in that way if you are targeting a organization you'll be able to get all those details so as the network administrator in your own organization you must run these commands from time to time basis just to make sure that your computers don't have any ports open which could be compromised later now why do we need to run these scans from time to time basis the reason is that maybe there is a new computer on the network maybe you are using your personal machine maybe the uh, help desk team might have installed a new operating system on a machine and they forgot to uh, take care of certain ports which should be blocked on the computer maybe those computers don't have antivirus installed on it now the corporate antivirus solutions that we install on the computers in a network environment it usually comes with, with anti-spam anti-malware and firewall installed on it so if all those things are controlled and you are controlling the settings of your antivirus solution yourself you can set up the rules where you are blocking access to lots of things which is by default open so you have multiple layers of protection before moving towards the protection on a firewall level you are controlling all those things on the computer level where the computer firewall is not letting lots of things through now they are just giving an example of uh, the scanning over here now reconnaissance uh, there is a fierce which is a pearl based tool which focus on particular targets unfortunately it's not available in a windows environment it's only working in uh, Linux. Uh, now Meltigo is a Java based tool offered in both communities of the commercial versions and is marketed as a forensics tools. Um, it's good I installed it but make sure you're not installing these tools on your production machines because it was generating some root kits etc and it was constantly giving me a notification that there is a possible virus or a threat on it. So uh, test it on a machine where you are not working now passive recon is a firefox add-on which is not available nowadays on uh, firefox to visit the website and gather the variety of information about that that's just the example of the output of the tool now this is metilgo and uh, it's a good tool it tells you about the overall mapping just like we did a trace route on a lab computer in previous lab session where we were trying to trace the route of the packets how they flow etc so all you need to do is for example install the software it's free for uh, um, for a limited time 
but you can install it and check it for example a website it hosts its details or relevant information about it so it shows you in a graphical user interface how you can work on it most of the penetration testers and hackers are using uh, this tool heavily you can purchase it uh, it's available but for individuals um, it's quite pricey so that's why most of the organizations are using it most of the scanners that you find these days on the internet including this one are cloud based so the solutions are cloud based you don't need to update the product itself it's automatically updated with the tools and everything and with the help of that um, you can do it now just to remind you for nmap um, it's so powerful that for example um, I'll, I'll cover most part of it during the lab time but you don't need to install lots of libraries for penetration testing on it there is a small command that you can use it would incorporate all those tools from the website and would check your network for any known vulnerabilities and it would identify that these are the known weaknesses of your system now in reconnaissance tcp dump and open source command line packet analyzer and wireshark similar to tcp dump but contains the gui interface now the difference between wireshark and a normal scanner is wireshark is scanning your network and it's capturing the packets as well so for example you are running a tool zenmap or nmap in order to find the information or the open ports on a computer now once you'll start the process of finding the information you'll start the packet pack, packet capture on wireshark you'll be able to see the syn synac and then ac and then reset all commands would be clear to you that there was a communication between these two computers so computer a was trying to get some information about computer b but if you'll move in the stealth mode or half scanning mode and then you'll pack capture the packets you won't be able to see the last ACK mode or the reset mode so it would directly reset it you won't be able to capture the packets in between so it helps us in finding the way how the data moves how the packets travels and how we share the information on it now these are the screenshots for Wireshark and then we are talking about vulnerability identification now Nessus is a good software for that a remote security scanner designed to run on Windows and Linux format I installed it yesterday it's a trial version uh, you get a free serial uh, key through your email I think it would work for 14 days uh, but you'll have to register it inside the network uh, it was closed Nipper commercial software that is on C++ and OpenBS is another open version of the same software and that's just the screenshot of the same technology and then it's showing you all the vulnerability listings which are there in your organization so that you can take proper actions against it and it's showing you a uh, graphical user interface with the graphs and charts so that uh, you know what's going on in your organization these are the shell browser desktops different things that it's scanning and then we have uh, college guard which is a software as a service vulnerability tool that is designed to support vulnerability testing including the discovery enforcement policies etc and uh, that's the report of it I searched for this software it's not available anymore Saint vulnerability scanner